today, today, we're gonna, we're here to spread some negative energy. So let's first, let's start by talking about the word hate. You know, I hate when, like, these magazines, like Vogue, WWD, GQ, what else? What other magazine? I'll insert some name right here. Like, when they release Colors Trend for Insert Season Here. Six, seven color trend for Insert Season Here. And it'll be like neon, yellow, red, blah, blah, blah. In this case, spring. It'll be like, oh, you should wear yellow, you should wear red, blah, 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 blah. These magazines don't know that they don't have that much influence anymore. Like, nobody's, like, at least not, at least not people that are friends with me, nobody goes on Vogue like, Hmm, I wonder what color I should wear. You know what? I should go on Vogue and they'll help me. Let's see what's trendy this year. My friends, my friends and I, we generally just wear whatever we want. You shouldn't base your fashion, you shouldn't base your style based on season. I dress myself purely on mood. Like, if I feel like I want to wear all black, I don't care what season it is, I'm going to wear all black. If someday I want to be a bit fruity, I will wear a lot of colors. I will wear these pants. I will wear colorful items. My point is, seasons does not dictate what colors I wear. They only dictate like what materials I wear. And I'm kind of trying to break that boundary down when I'm going to wear my Rick Owen down jacket in the summer because I can. But anyway, when I think about spring, <laughs> I don't know how that intro is going to connect to this, but when I think about spring, I think about spring towards the beginning of summer meaning it's like 40 degrees 50 degrees like uh, let's put it this way like when you go outside you're gonna see a bunch of white dudes with like shorts on and hoodies you'll see a bunch of white girls like with their ripped jeans and like tank top and like a blazer or you'll see them in like leggings and just like a crop top and then you'll see like a bunch of Asian women like wearing Canada goose still <laughs> Like, that's the type of weather I'm talking about. Spring in Boston, it ranges from like 31 degree at the lowest to like 67. And sometimes it will reach a 70, but mainly it generally stays in that 50 range, which is perfect. With cities that have four seasons, like Boston, like 40 degrees in Boston is like a nice weather. But 40 degrees in California, everybody's bringing out their puffer, you know. So it's like, you have to account for what, what city you're in as well. Spring. Spring is also a time where daylight saving is over, so we get we generally get more sunlight. The sun sets a lot later in the day. Scientifically speaking, sunlight is known to like release serotonin inside our body, so it's always good. You know, it'll bring our mood up. And you also don't want to waste a perfectly nice warm day if you have a day off, you know, so like it's a lot easier to waste like a rainy day, but when it's a nice day out, you don't want to be inside, you know, just watching Netflix or whatever it is that you do. Anyway, so here are some knitwear that I will be wearing this spring. So the first knitwear or the first two knitwear I will be showing you is the Peter Doe knitwear. <coughs> Whoa, my voice just went out. The first two knitwear that I will be showing you today are these two Peter Doe's knitwears. I love the team at Peter. I love the team at Peter Doe. I will always try to support them. Recently they had like a big not big, they had a private sale and this Sherling code right here, it was on sale but it was still on sale for like 2.5 which is a bit too pricey for my sake retail on it was like 7,000, 6,000 but it went down to 2.5 and they only have one size left in a size 40 which is like a medium but I was more comfortable with like a 1.2, 1.5 but you know, someone else richer got it at 2.5 because they were more comfortable with the price tag and the point is I always try to support Peter and the team and you know I next season they probably have some more shirling shirling coats and I'm sure they'll put it in the sale again which will be nice and I will try it again but well, maybe I'll have more money next year to I have more disposable disposable income to you know spend on a coat or on a jacket but these um, knitwear as you can see by the shape right now it is very very cropped so the yellow one that you're seeing on the screen right now is a size medium or a size 42 and the blue one that you're seeing right now which is a size small which is a 40 yeah a 40 women both of these pieces are women but recently Peter and the team has started to release some stuff in menswear but I got these when they were still only making women's wear in the winter I generally wear these as a layering piece 
because like, I think it looks very nice underneath like a trench coat or any coat. I generally don't wear these underneath the blazer, but um, it's definitely doable. So, oh, okay, we're getting off topic. It's spring, it's a spring video, so for spring. So I'm probably gonna wear this as its own piece because I love the unique shape of it because like, it's so cropped, the sleeves are elongated, and I'm gonna put this video up right now. You can see the different knitting technique that is going on on these knitwears. It just, it makes the knitwear a bit more dynamic. It challenges the convention a little bit. Like from afar, you'll see that, oh, it's just a knitwear, it's a tournament. But the closer you get to it, you can see the different technique used. You can see the material, you can feel it. If you can go up to somebody and touch the clothes, you know. These knitwears, they're made in China. However, the quality is very, very good. Like if you didn't know, you'll probably think it was made in Italy, like it's on that level, like we also shouldn't discount China just because it's made in China, like there are levels of this, you know, it's just, there are poor, there are poor factories in Italy as well, so not every made in Italy is the same as every made in Italy. These knitwears, they're very warm, it's, uh, it has a nice weight to it, like it feels, you can feel that it's, you can feel the substance of it, but it's not to the point where it's like, too heavy where it's like if you wear it too long you're gonna feel the weight of it it just it struck like a perfect balance um the sleeve the sleeves are elongated and you know with spring weather sometimes there's a wind sometimes it's windy so if <clears throat> if it gets too cold you know just cocoon yourself up like pull the sleeve you know and put your arm in there that should be good the turtleneck part it um it fits your neck perfectly it's designed to be that way it was cut to be that way you can also roll it down but I generally don't roll it down unless it's too hot because I I love the turtleneck look and the fact that it fits perfectly. I have other turtlenecks that like you have to fold down to make sure it's like directly underneath your chin, but this one it just it's perfect. And as you know, the tattoo the sleeve the tattoo sleeve on the left, it just it's a signature of the brand. It's a signature. It's a tattoo of the designer Peter. Another thing I want to talk about is that there is one drawback to this knitwear to these knitwears is that the logo. So the logo is underneath the armpit which you are probably watching right now and it's just being held up by two stitches and on my blue one, one of them has already fallen off. Either I'm gonna cut it off completely or I'm gonna reattach the one that's fallen off. But yeah, that's I guess that's the only drawback. Another thing is that, um, another drawback for me is that the way it's cut, the way it's cut is that the back is like shorter than the front or the front is shorter than the back, whatever it is you're seeing in the video right now. I don't like that, I, I would prefer it to match lengthwise, but another good thing about this is that, okay, let's do this, let's do some exercise. So you're probably, you're probably wearing a t-shirt right now, so let's do this exercise. So. Alright, so what I will need you to do, what I want you to do is that put your arm out and then reverse it, reverse the shirt. And now when you wear it backward, like you can feel it because the way this t-shirt is cut is that there is a right way, there is a front, there is a back, like you can feel like it doesn't feel right. But with the Peter dough is that the way it's cut is that it's reversible but not like reversible inside out, more like reversible 180 degrees. So that little exercise, it should show you my point, is that the way you cut heat on the teeth is that like it's reversible 180 degrees or like not inside out. So like you can wear it with the tattoo on the right sleeve or the left sleeve. It's up to you, you won't feel the difference. And the fact that they put the logo underneath the armpit and not on the neck, so that like you won't feel it on the front either. So I think that's a very big pro. I only see the front of it, like people behind me will see the back of it, but it doesn't matter to me. I I will be wearing I will be wearing this piece a lot in the next coming months until the summer, even in the summer, when it's a really nice day and not too hot. Because like this piece, it's very the material is so cool. the material is like it's not like wool. It's not gonna be like incredibly warm and fuzzy. So since it's hundred percent cotton, you can wear this in the summer if it's breezy. You know if there is like air hitting you, but. It's hard to explain, but in the winter, it's good for in the winter, but it's also good for the summer. You just have to find the right day to wear it in that season, you know? And um, a typical outfit that I would wear with this piece would probably be straight black legged trousers and my tabbies. For some reason, I always wear tabby boots when I wear these. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like, it's the conventional well put look, but when you break it down, you know, like it, a pair of tabby from afar just look like 
any other pair of boots, but the closer you get to it, you see the split toe. This knitwear, right, it just looked like a turtleneck, but the closer you get to it, you see the different texture, you see the different design, you see the different patterns, you know? So it's like, it's conventional, but the closer you get to it, the closer you can see that it goes a bit against the green. Am I looking too deep into this fashion shit? I feel like I am. All right, next up. So next up we have this Prada cardigan and this was on the runway. I'll put the photo up right here. It's fuzzy. It's made from mohair. I was really, really obsessed with mohair at one point. I think it was back in early 2020, late 2019 when I was really obsessed with mohair. So I got a couple of mohair and knitwear now. This is one of them. I truly, truly love this cardigan. I wear this cardigan more than my bare knuckles or my other grade. Totokayo um, cardigan because I think it comes down to the um, the conventional jacket button style with with most cardigan it's like it's like a v-neck you know there's only a three button from the floor up so like you button the three up and it's like it has like a v-neck shape I'm not personally a big fan of that so I think this is why I love this Prada cardigan so much because it buttoned up all the way so it looks very classy, it looks very feminine and it looks very well put. It doesn't look too street, it looks just like... Like this piece isn't something that's gonna be like scream in your face, it's like, oh what is it? Like with this particular cardigan, it's like one of those pieces where you just have to have them in your closet. It's just like, it's an essential, it's a necessity. It's but yeah, this this Prada cardigan, it's... Uh, it's Mixed with mohair, I, I will put a photo up right now of the materials. I was actually thinking about sending this to my partner's mom because she wears a lot of black, but then we talked it over and just... This, this, oh by the way, uh, this Prada cardigan, it's one of those pieces where you need, where your body to acclimate to it because it is mohair, it is wool, so it's a bit itchy. If you never worn mohair, you will feel the itch the first few wears, but the more you wear it, the more your body will get acclimated to it, which will, it's just gonna take a bit of time. And I haven't worn it in a while, and I know that when I put it on again, I'm gonna feel it for like the first five minutes, and then it's gonna be just like any other knitwear, you know, any other wool mohair knitwear. But it, it is, it does have that nature. Also, it does leave like fuzziness, like material on the floor, and attach it to your other, um, your other clothes. So that's the downside of mohair, but. The upside to mohair is that it's incredibly warm and you can f you can see the fabric of it. Like with cotton, you just you can't see it, but with mohair, the closer you get to it, you can see like it's like branching in and out everywhere. So I was gonna send it to my partner's mom. I still might, still thinking about it. Mother's Day is coming up. I could do it, but I don't know how I don't know how much wear she would get out of it because she doesn't like she doesn't like these like exotic material she, she's a very um, cotton type girl you know so still thinking as far as this cardigan goes I typically wear them with an all black outfit sometimes like I'll mix in like green trousers or maybe beige trousers but generally I wear them in all black like just a black shirt underneath black trousers black boots or white sneakers, you know, just keep it casual. I tend to wear these pieces when I just want to blend in a little bit, just want to be, I just want to look well put together, but not like stand out when I'm wearing like my kiss boots or, you know, like one of my more exotic jackets and knitwear, you know. You're probably, you're, right now I should put the mohair material close up up and you can see that it's like, there are holes to it, yet this cardigan is designed to be worn in the winter, so you might be wondering if it will keep you warm. It does, like despite all the holes, it does keep you warm because the material of mohair is very warm. It's made from goat or sheep. So like, you know, it's gonna keep you very warm in the winter. So it is kind of hard to wear in the summer, but spring, I find spring to be perfect. Like just a t-shirt and that cardigan over and you're all set, you know, when it's like 50 degrees out. Again, you know, this piece is like the opposite of like a trendy piece, like, do you guys remember when neon was such a big thing, like two years ago? Like everybody was designing like neon stuff because I think Balenciaga started that trend. Or like when Vatmon like made everybody wear raincoat and hoodie to Paris Fashion Week. Like it's one of it's like this cardigan is the antithesis, antithesis, antithesis of those trendy pieces. It's just something that you should have in your closet. It just it's a proper and well-made cardigan. 
just it it doesn't it's not trendy it's it's timeless so it's just something that I think everybody should have in their closet if you are able to find a similar one or this particular one. Alright, so um, next up we have this Raph Simmons Redux Archive. This is the F patch sweater or turtleneck, not turtleneck, or knitwear. Yeah, sweater, knitwear, whatever you want to call it. But anyway, it was from this season right here. This is the runway right here. I'll include the video. The model walks very fast, so here we go. Yeah, so this is just a redux and bring it back a little bit. Um, Raph Simon decided to release a hundred pieces from its archive for the 25th anniversary of the brand. And these came out like a year ago. I have had them for like a year now and I have worn it for exactly once. And it's not because like it's a very hard sweater to wear or anything. It's not like the shape is like bothering me or that it's, it's truly the material. The, the wool, they're so thick and like they're so rugged like it's like it's not itchy but then when you touch it with your hand it's like ugh yes, why are you so rough like why are you so rough and heavy on my skin the material is incredibly impractical because with this sweater you can't really layer it this sweater like it's such a monster that you want to show off the grotesque nature of this piece which means you can't layer it but when you wear it in the spring, it's like the materials are so thick and warm, it's gonna keep you too warm in the spring. So summer is out, so spring, like on a very, very nice day in spring where it's windy but it's hot. That's like the perfect weather. So it's like it's so hard to wear this piece purely because of the material. It's not because of the shape, the shape is a lot, but like just you you don't have to do much with this, just let the piece speak for itself, but the material makes it so hard to wear. This piece is very weather dependent and since it's wool, but you can't wear it in, you know, rain and snow obviously. And you can't wear it when it's like 90 degrees out either. So like, out of 365 days, you probably find 20 days that you can wear this. And if you wear it on the wrong days, it's it's gonna fuck you up. By the way, this is a size 2. They, um, wraps them in their team releases the two sizes, size 1 and size 2. This is the intended fit, but even if it's on, you can see right now that when it's on me, it's still like really, really big. I should have gotten a size one. I realize that now. I should have gotten a size one. I can't, I can't stress this enough. Like the wool is not like, it's not the same as the wool on my other Raphsimon, like on my Raphsimon RS sweater. The wool on that piece is soft wool. The wool on this piece, it's thick, it's rugged, and you feel it on your skin, like. And it also leaves the fabric everywhere. Like I uploaded a video a while back, not a while back, like a week or two ago of like just a B-roll of it. And like whenever you wear it, you're gonna like find red pieces, red wool pieces on the ground and attached to your other clothing. I'm gonna try to wear it more, like as often as I can because I truly love this piece. I love the collection. I think this collection was one of Raph's best. And lately his collections, are, they're not the greatest in my opinion, or maybe I just grown as a person and I sort of grew out of it, but Rapsimon seasons, Rapsimon sea collections lately, they just, they're not it for me, like, I want more and I expect more and I know we can do more, it just, there's only so much hoodie with, you know, some print with, like, a quote that I can take. Lately it's lacking, maybe it's the fact that he's working at Prada now, so he doesn't put that much effort into his own line which is a criticism that he has received over the years when he was at Dior, people says, people claim that his own collection has gotten worse when he was at Calvin 205, people also said that Just, there's only so much hoodies you can take, you know, like there's only so many variations of a hoodie that you can do. You gotta try to make new shapes like this sweater right here. This is a new shape, it just, it's so grotesque, it's so big. Like, you feel like this varsity vibe but the F patch, it feels like you, like, it looks like you, it looks like you got this sweater from like 1980 and just been worn down to hell with all the cuts through the v-necks, to the, um, the hem and all that, so you know, it just, it has a vibe to it that I haven't felt connected lately with his later collections, so I really love his archive release, like the Redux, 
I thought that was a very good idea. I have a few pieces from them. I have a lot of pieces from them. It just it's very well made clothes and it just it tells a story while also not being conventional which is very important to me. But yeah, so um, I work seven days a week, so it's very hard for me to like wear this often. And like, I only have one body. I have so many great pieces that like, it's hard to find time to wear equally, wear all my pieces. I hope you know what I mean. I feel like I'm lingering on too long. But yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try my best to wear this here because I truly love the shape of it. I love the collection. Despite how much I hate the material, I do love it. I know that sounds, it sounds like an oxymoron, but it's just like, it's so new to me, like I've never felt wool this thick and this rugged, so it's like, hmm, it is hard on my skin, but it's like, I appreciate how thick it is, because I equate thickness to quality, so. But yeah, um, I think I'm gonna put these up for sale, because I just don't, I just don't get enough wear out of it, so I feel like other people can get more wears out of it than me. I don't know, maybe I'll change my mind, but at the moment, it just, I don't wear it enough, and you know, I have other priorities to take care of now, like clothes are not like the main priority anymore. So next up we have the bare knuckles. Bare knuckles? Bare knuckle? Bare knuckles. I love this piece. I wear it. Actually, I don't wear it anymore. Not because I don't love it, but I, I put it in the car now and uh, my family wears it more than me. I I leave like a couple of knitwear in there just like when they don't dress to the right weather they can just put it on you know if it's too cold so it's one of those pieces now so it just sits in my car a lot let's start with the color the color is like yellow and gold it just it's it's perfect it's a perfect yellow it's not hard yellow but it's not soft yellow it hits like the perfect middle ground and i love the material which is alpaca blend with wool and cotton i believe i'll put a photo of right now but alpaca very soft but it has this like distinct smell to it other bare knuckles cardigan owner they know what I'm talking about if you have if you have felt this and touched this and smelled this in person you know exactly what I'm talking about there's like this distinct smell it's not good it's not bad it's just like it's the smell of this cardigan this YouTube thing like Jacob Keller he was one of the first to start these fashion men fashion YouTube like him Luca Fersco like Sanji like all of these guys you know they they started they they were the first they were the first ones to like truly get this subcategory off the ground for YouTube. So, you know, it just and it's a small brand, you know. I always want to support small brands. I I don't personally like the V-necks because yeah, so I don't personally like the V-necks, which means I never truly button it up. I think this card would look the best when it just open and you I generally wear this with just like a white t-shirt underneath, but I think it looks best with like a T with a graphic on the front, you know, like so you expose the graphic a little bit. Another thing I want to talk about is like the fraying or the there's like cuts and holes everywhere on these pieces and on the sleeves, on the hem, on the um, buttons area, on throughout the body. It just it's a nice detail, you know. It's a nice touch. It makes the jacket looks a bit less conventional, which is good, you know. You're spending three hundred dollars on a cardigan. You don't want it to look like a regular cardigan. I really like the fact that they had they have. Um, pockets you know like my Prada cardigan doesn't have pockets this this one do so like it has two pockets so it's not I don't think the pockets are that usable because you don't want to put too, anything too heavy in there because you know it's alpaca it's wool it's gonna droop you know so if you put something too heavy and it's also for security's sake you know you don't want to put anything too valuable in there like you don't want to put your watch you don't want to put like your passport in there it just it's not as secure as other pieces like with this blazer, like the interior pocket is a lot more secure than the bare knuckle. If there is any color that fits really well with like a garden full of blossom flowers, it's this cardigan right here. It's bright. When I was in university, we studied like colors and like the, the effects of mood it has on you. So like brands, like when they release a like, commercial or when they're picking their logo, like all of these things are, take, are taken into the account. It's just like you know, red is very flirtatious, you know, so like if you're a brand, if you're like a church, you know, you don't want to have red color, you know, it just, it's like, you know, red is also like attached to like the devil's color, whereas Jesus is white, you know, if, so if you're building a church, you don't want to have your logo to have red on it, just from the association of the color having, just because of the association, associate, associate, 
association that the color red has to the devil you know like this piece goes with everything and you know you probably heard me say it like three four times now that all of these pieces I'm showing you goes with everything well you are probably asking so what pieces don't go well with anything just just look down like look down at what you're wearing like that's the look that don't go with anything next up we have the Raph Simon RS sweater now I have to confess something <laughs> These two knitwears have been at the bottom pile. Forgot that I had these for like two, three months. Because like when I first got it, I loved it so much. And like I would just wear it to lounge around and but now I don't even touch it. So like it just like I forgot about it. I forgot that I had this piece. When I was writing this script, I completely forgot that this is knitwear. I could use this in my video. I completely forgot about it until like I went through my closet organizing. So like it's a great piece, I still love it. So the Raph Simon RS sweater, it's a variation on this runway piece of I Love New York. This piece is that has definitely become one of Raph's best pieces, commercially speaking, you know, if you're one of those. Raph Simon Archive, baby. I don't wear Raph Simon in the mainstream, I only wear Archive. I have to shut up about that, who cares? Anyway. But this piece, like to the general public, people know that this piece is a Raph Simon piece. Most of it has to do with like the print of it, but I believe that the reason it's so popular is that the shape is so new or was so new. I think it still is new, like I haven't seen any other brand copy them. And like the shape is just it's so different. Very cropped on the body, the sleeves are huge. It's like when you swing your arm you can feel it. Looks like you're a fat person swinging with like a lot of fat underneath arm, you know, it's just like that. And then the 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 way it sits on your body just like it's very different from anything else that you'll see on the street that day let's say you go out into boston new york wherever let's say you walk 10 blocks you will not see another piece with this same shape like that's how unique it is that's how different it is so i think that's the main reason why i think like the general public has taken note of this piece because the general public, meaning like people, the white girls wearing yoga pants, the Asian dude wearing like basic holster, or white dudes wearing gym shorts and you know NBA jersey, like these people, I truly believe that these people know what this piece is because like the shape is so unique. So if you, if I were to just wear these pants out in public, they just think, oh, it's just another pair of pants. Like they're not gonna care about it. But when you wear that Raph Simon sweater outside, like people will take notice because the shape is just so different. And it just it's very captivating more so than anything when I wear this piece like I feel like people are looking at me more but like positively when I wear my kiss boot I can feel like judging eyes from like the older people and like those like straight male with you know fragile ego they're like what the fuck is this fruity asshole wearing is he wearing heels like sometimes I, I get that vibe from like somebody's like older gentlemen but anyway but with the Raph 7 piece it just it's universally beloved and for good reason to it just it's so different and speaking of material well not I am not connecting these things very well but material it's so soft it's it's total opposite this piece is total opposite from the Raph 7 F pad sweater it just this thing is so soft straight out of the box it's got soft and the only problem I have with it is just cause it's that filling piling or pulling like whatever it's called like it just when you have a wool material made clothing it just it's gonna do the peeling or piling or pulling whatever it's called so my sweater the, the white one especially or the cream one it has a lot of peeling on it and I don't think like there's like a way to fix it either you kind of just have to deal with it and just minimize it to the best of your ability but it's it's gonna be there you know when you wear it when you put it through the test when you, the wear, and, the wear and tear of the everyday wear is just gonna bring this problem out. And you know, but this sweater, it's very, it's wool, it's 100% wool, it's 100% pure wool or soft wool. I don't know if there's a difference or not, but on some tags it says pure wool, on some tags it says fine wool, whatever it is, it, it's wool, it's wool material. So it's perfect for spring because you can just wear this over a t-shirt or wear this over a button up, like how the runway was, was styled. So it just, it's perfect for spring, like, again, spring, not like spring when it's raining, but like spring towards the summer when it's like 50 degrees. The sun is shining, the wind is blowing, women are wearing sundresses, white dudes are wearing short foot hoodies, Asian people are still wearing Canada Goose, you know, that's the weather I'm talking about. So, 
it's great. You know, like the fact that this piece is so universally known, or maybe it's just in my head, but I do, I do believe it. I do believe that it's like people who aren't into fashion, they know what this piece is. It's like um, the Margiela Gats, like the shoe, the replica. Like sneakerheads will know what it is, but like sneakerheads will not know what tabbies are. Once again, with spring, I don't prescribe to the idea that like you need to wear a particular color. Just my my personal thing is that my outfits they're based on my mood. Like sometimes I feel cocky and sassy, so I'll wear my kiss boots with like a really weird jacket. But sometimes I want to I want to be colorful, you know. I want to be bright. So I would wear like these trousers, like my yellow sweater, my yellow shirt, like colorful shoes, whatever it is. But sometimes I just want to wear all black, not think about it and just leave the house. So I will wear all black in the summer and the spring, whatever. I hate these articles. Whenever I read them, I hate these articles like, oh, here's, here's what you should wear. Like, I think that's such a stupid idea to like wear only particular colors for a particular month or particular season. Just wear what you feel like wearing. If you feel like you want to wear black, wear black. If you want to wear yellow, wear yellow. Who cares? The season should not dictate what you what you can wear. Like this video is made out of that hate, out of the hatred of these articles that like Vogue and GQ written up. You should wear this. You should wear these colors for the spring this time, 2022. You should wear this. And like, Shut the fuck up. You do not have any influence on this world. Okay. You you had influence on this, but. Vogue, GQ, you are out of touch. The only reason people go on Vogue is to look at runway collection. The only people go on GQ, nobody goes on GQ. My name is Makasi. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.